Hi, thanks for joining me today. I've got a problem which was shortlisted for the International Maths Olympiad. We have two functions, h and k, both from the reals onto the reals, and it satisfies this equation here, that k of h of x plus y equals h of x plus 2x plus y times k of y. And this is for all real numbers x and y. And we're told that h composed with k, or in other words, Fuck to it. is 69. Find k h of x and k of x. That is the problem for this video. Do pause the video now and give it a go for yourself, but I'm going to dive straight into a solution. So the first thing we're going to do is just replace the x and the y's with each other. So just swap them around in this equation here. So I'm going to get k h of x plus y is the same as y plus x. If I'm swapping x and y, that's just state as x plus y and then this will be h of y plus 2y plus x times k of x okay cool now at this point i'd just like to reiterate that this is a shortlisted imo problem which means that it's not a trivial problem and what i'm about to do you may ask well how on earth do i know to do that what on earth uh, would I do in this situation to come up with the following argument? And the honest answer is, I mean, firstly, the people doing the IMO are really, really smart, and they would have seen lots and lots of problems like this in the past. But also, it does just come from having, trying a few different things and playing about with it. So what am I going to prove? I'm going to prove, firstly, that K is a linear function, and that's going to be super, super useful in solving this problem. How do we prove that k is a linear function? Well, what I'm going to do is take these two equations here, I'll call this equation 2 and the original one, equation 1, and I'm just going to subtract them from each other. So do 1 minus 2, and you'll notice that these guys will cancel out with each other. And well, what am I left with? Well, I'm left with 0 equals, so I'm going to get h of x minus h of y, and then I'm going to get plus, so 2x plus y, k of y, minus 2y plus x, k of x. Cool. And so this equation holds true for every single value of x and y. And now I'm just going to choose kind of three pairs of values for x and y to substitute in here. And I'm going to get three equations, which will simplify really, really nicely. Um, so the first thing I'm going to plug in is I'm going to just plug in x and 0. So x I'm going to keep the same and y I'm going to replace with 0. So I get 0 equals h of x minus h of 0 plus and this will just be 2x plus 0, so just 2x, times k of 0. And then this will be just minus 2 lots of 0 plus x, so just minus x, times k of x, like so. Okay, next I'm going to substitute in 1 and x. Um, so if I do that, I'm going to get 0 equals, so h of x minus h of y. So I'm putting x is 1 in here, and y is going to be x. So this is just going to be h of 1 minus h of x. Uh, plus, and then now x is 1, so this would be 2 lots of 1, so 2 plus x lots of k of x, like so, and then minus, then 2x plus 1 lots of k of 1, like so. And finally, if we substitute in uh, x is 0 and y is 1, we get 0 equals h of 0 minus h of 1, plus, and then in here we get just 2 lots of 0 plus 1, so that's just 1. So lot of k of 1 minus 2 lots of 0 plus 1. Oh, sorry, 2 lots of 1 plus 0. So minus 2 lots of k of x, which is k of 0, like so. Now, you might ask, how on earth would I know to do this? Well, again, it's, it comes from a bit of experience. But I think more, more so in this case, because we want, if we notice now, what we're going to do is add up these three equations. The reason being because these terms here very nicely cancel out with one another. So if I add these three equations up, the left hand side is 0 plus 0 plus 0, which is 0. On the right hand side, I get h of x minus h of x. They, those cancel. h of 1 minus h of 1, those cancel. And h of 0 minus h of 0, those cancel. So that's really, really nice. All the h's disappear. But in fact, there's still quite a lot of simplification we can do here. Let's look at this k1 term. This is a positive k1. But if we look here, we've also got a minus k1. So we can kind of cancel those two terms together. OK, what else can we cancel? Well, we've got a, a plus x times kx and a minus x times kx there. Those will cancel out as well. What else can we cancel out? Um, I 
think that's everything. I'm just staring at it. I think that's everything we can cancel out from this. But that's perfectly fine. So we've got 2x times k of 0 um, plus 2kx minus 2x times k1 uh, minus 2k0. And if I just rearrange this, I get 2kx, or if I can just divide by 2. So k of x equals, and if I bring these two terms to the other side, I get x lots of k1 minus k0 plus k of 0. And remember, this is true for any value of x. And k1 minus k0, that is just some constant. I can call that a. And then k0 is just a constant. I can call that b. So this is just ax plus b. And so we've proved that k of x is ax plus b. So k of x is a linear function, which is going to be super, super powerful, uh, super useful for us in proceeding here. OK, so we now have that k is a linear function and we want to see what this gives us for h. And you might think, well, let's just directly substitute this into here. But the only issue is we've got h here uh, kind of embedded inside k, but it's h of x plus y. It would be great if that was h of x, but it's not. So we kind of somehow want to get rid of this. And here's how we're going to do that. We're going to take this original equation here and firstly just get rid of this term. And the way we can do that is by making y equal minus 2x. So if we sub that in there, we get k of h. And so x plus minus 2x is just minus x equals, well, h of x. Cool. So we've got that equation there. And that's true for all real numbers, x. Okie dokie. Now what we're going to do is just replace x in this equation here with um, minus x plus y. So if we set x equal to minus x plus y, and when I say minus x plus y, I'm saying like the x plus y in brackets. So then this thing here will become a double negative, and this will just be x plus y equals h of x, which is just h of minus x plus y, like so. And the reason we get rid we do this is because then we kind of get rid of the k bit here, because now I can take this original equation and match it with this equation we've just deduced to get the h of minus x plus y equals, so h of x, plus 2x plus y, lots of k of y. Okie dokie. Now, all we've got to do is get rid of these x's. Uh, oh, sorry, get rid of the, yeah, we'll get rid of the x's here. So I'm going to replace x with 0 and replace uh, y with minus y. And sub that into here, we get h of, so 0 plus y, or 0 minus y is minus y, but double negative makes that y. So h of y equals h of 0 plus, and then this will be, well, actually minus y times k of minus y. Now, remember, k, k of x is just ax plus b, and so we can replace this k of minus y with minus y times uh, a times minus y plus b. And so that's just going to be ay squared minus by plus c, if I just call this thing here c. Great. So that is just a quadratic function. Amazing, we've managed to work out what k and h are essentially, except we've got these constants here, which we are just going to figure out using this condition and some other stuff about h and k. Uh, so k is ay squared minus by plus c. OK, let's work out what these constants are and therefore deduce what h and k are. OK, so the key thing we're going to use now is this equation up here, which we deduced. So all we're going to do is plug in what we have for h and k into this, keeping uh, the x arbitrary. So let's start with k h of minus x. Well, k, remember, is a times the input plus b. So it's going to be a times h of minus x and then plus b. Well, what is h of minus x? You just sub in, uh, replace y here with minus x. So that's going to be x squared uh, minus by will be plus bx and then plus c. And then that equals h of x, which is just ax squared plus bx plus c. Oh, sorry, minus bx plus c, even. Um, cool. And now, essentially, we can just compare coefficients because these are supposed to be the same for every value of x. So maybe if we just expand and simplify this, we get a squared x squared plus abx plus ac plus b equals ax squared minus bx plus c. 
Uh, so let's start with the x squared term. So we get a squared equals a. And so either a is 0 or a is 1. And there's a few ways that we can prove that a is not 0. Um, but the way I'm going to do it is prove that if a was 0, if a indeed was 0, then that means that k is just a constant function. It's just b. Which means that, oops, in our original equation here, this is just some constant. Uh, this term here is just a constant. And uh, this is a function of x, h of x. Um, but the only way that then this would be possible is if h of x was a function of y. And that, that's, not, that's clearly not possible. Um, so the only way that that could, you know, we could el eliminate that possibility if b was also 0. So if a and b were both 0. Uh, but then if a and b are both zero, then k is just the constant zero function. But if k is just the constant zero function, this is this, and you get h of x is the constant zero function. But that's definitely not possible because of this fact here. Cool. So we've eliminated the possibility that a is zero, and so therefore a must be one. Amazing. And this is, in fact, nice in terms of looking at the other things. So if we just sub in a is one here, we get x squared plus bx plus b plus c equals x squared minus bx plus c. So if we look at the look at the x terms, we get that b must be 0 because b is minus b. So those two terms vanish and we've got b plus c is c and b we know is 0. So we just get c equals c. So c for the moment is an arbitrary constant. Okay, let's put all this together. So we've got k of x is just ax plus b. a is 1, b is 0. So that's just x. And what about h of x? That's just going to be one lot of x squared minus zero lots of x plus some constant c. And now we can go back to this fact here. And if we just sub that back in, so if we sub in k is, uh, uh, x is 2 into this, we get k of 2 is just 2. And so then h of k of 2 is just 2 squared plus c, which is 4 plus c. So 4 plus c is 69. And so C must be 65. And so we get that therefore K of X is just X and H of X is X squared plus 65. I hope you have enjoyed this problem. A pretty nice problem. Of course, I have uh, made use of the current trend uh, or the current meme. I don't know, whatever you call it. I'm, I'm getting old these days. I don't follow. Uh, I'm not down with the kids. Um, anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed this problem. A bit different to my recent videos, probably a bit more challenging than some of my recent videos, but hopefully you've enjoyed that. If you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing, and if, you've, if you have enjoyed this video, do give it a like. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day. Fuck.